there's plenty of cool cases for the Raspberry Pi 4 and uh, the one I've been sent recently is no exception. This is the Pion Man from Sunfounder. Well, it definitely wins the award for the most bits that come supplied. And uh, what's quite handy though, every bag is labeled with the size of the screws and everything, but there are loads of bits here. Uh, ribbon cables, all sorts of things. Here's the breakout board, which you can see. Uh, GPIO pins, we've got the M.2 drive with various different slots there, I guess, for different sizes. I'll find that out in a minute. Uh, and we've also got USB-C, what looks like SD card slot. Yeah, two USB-Cs. This is a little SD card adapter, which is gonna go with one of these ribbon cables. Uh, I've got a little spanner tool. This looks like it could be handy in the future, a USB-C to USB-A adapter, uh, much wider, much longer than any of the ones I've had before. And then there's various different things to mount the fans, thermal pads, uh, whatever ooh, whatever that is. That was well protected, so I've got to be careful with that. Oh, that's the display. That makes sense. And then we've got these acrylic sides. And the case itself is metal. You can see that the inputs and outputs are all labelled and everything as well. So uh, I'm going to put this together and see what it looks like. Fortunately, the ice cube tower is uh, is dented, which is weird because all the packaging was absolutely fine, but you can see that top bit uh, is dented, so I might need to bend that back into shape. It's still going to work the same, I'm sure, but uh, yeah, a little bit disappointing. I've just noticed the top bit actually comes off and reveals a bit that is nowhere near as dented or scratched, and uh, it's still compressed a bit, so I need to sort that out. So I'm just using this little plastic adapter just to be able to tease it open a bit, uh, just to kind of even these up. I could spend more time making it super neat, although you're not really going to see it very closely when it's inside the case. Yeah, that looks a lot better. So I didn't put the sound on this bit because the builders were digging up my garden and it was very noisy. But uh, there, needless to say, there's loads and loads of steps, uh, all sorts of things to plug in, ribbon cables, uh, little cables. To be fair, it's quite enjoyable. Uh, because you're kind of building something together but there's way more steps than I've had in any other Pi case I've had before. You can see the various thermal pads that go on. This is a nice touch having this acrylic over the display. Just gives it a bit more of a premium look. Okay so I put it all together and it's looking very smart. I'm guessing these go on the base here. So let's pop that on there. Yeah, that means that it feels, it just feels more premium having having rubber feet or something on the bottom because it's not making it a scratchy surface. Yeah, that does look very cool. I haven't put the M.2 drive in yet, uh, but luckily that's on the base, so it looks like I can just remove these four screws and get access to it. Let's try that. All these screw threads feel nice and firm because it's screwing into metal. It just feels that little bit more solid. Okay, so... Yeah, so we have access just by taking out those four screws to the M.2 drive. I've got one in my Argon 1 case, so let's unscrew that. And lose the screw. And there is a screw in here already, which I can use. Let's pop that in and screw that up. Yeah, that's in place. Pop this back on. Okay, so it's all up and running. I've managed to install the software in KDE Plasma, which I'm really pleased about. It works absolutely fine in there. It is built on 64-bit Raspberry Pi OS, so I was hoping it would work anyway. But uh, yeah, there's various different lights in here. So you can see there's LEDs in the bottom, which you can control the speed that they flash. Then in the top part, there's the LEDs, which you stick in there. Uh, and on the front, you've got this display, and there's an option to have it always on. It doesn't flash at all and it's more green than my camera picks up on, but you can see CPU usage, temperature, the IP address on the top there, ah, there you go, that's what happens when it goes off, and if you press the power button, it comes back on. Uh, you can see my RAM usage and also my total amount of storage. I'm on a 16 gig SD card at the moment, but uh, yeah, really pleased with that. So let's try and show what happens with uh, the changes that you make. So if I go into terminal, uh, I'll show you how to install it in a minute, but I figured I'd show this first of all. So this is the configuration file. You can see here uh, we have various different settings. So the fan cuts in at 50 degrees, which is a little low for a pie. I'd probably go more like 70. Uh, it has cut in once, 
Uh, I think I launched Gparted and it cut in, but then it would it cut out really quickly. So screen always on uh, is false at the moment, but you can change that to true to have it on all the time. We've got various different controls over the RGB lights, which is pretty cool. It's on 50 at the moment. I would probably slow it down, it's a bit flickery. But if I go into the folder, you can do it via terminal, uh, but you can also do it by finding the folder. So if I do view and show hidden files and go to .config, and then we have a Pyonman folder. And if we go in the config.txt, the nice thing about doing it in this is that uh, we have some of the settings at the top so you can see what it is. So if I do the RGB blink speed to be one uh, to slow it right down, temperature, I can change that to 70. Screen always on. I think I will put it on for now because I think it's quite a cool screen. And there's various different things here. You can delete the hash and enable all these features. So various different things about using that power button. Change the temperature from Celsius to Fahrenheit. So now I can save those changes and just restart. And that's restarted and the changes to the LEDs as to how they're flashing have happened. Uh, now it's restarted if you see the power button. If I press and hold the power button, it will come up with power off and it will shut down my Pi. You can see it's shutting down. And then if I want to power it back on again, I can just press the power button and it comes on. They call it a safe shutdown on the website. So I mentioned before that this is running from a 16 gig SD card. So let's install Raspberry Pi OS onto that 128 gig M.2 drive I've got in there. So let's launch Raspberry Pi Imager and I'm just going to install 64 bit Raspberry Pi OS on here. That one will do. Choose storage. This is the M.2 drive. Hit right and yes. Okay, so that's all written successfully. So let's power this down again. Just press and hold. Let it do the power off. And then we can eject the micro SD card from the back. And you can actually just push it and let it go. That's enough to be ejected. So if you're putting a card in and out, you can just leave it in the back of the Pi. And so let's power that on again. Okay, so that's a fresh copy of Raspberry Pi OS. And as it stands on default, so the fan isn't running, none of the extra lights on, the only extra light that you've got really is that power button light. But the power button doesn't work until you install the script. So the instructions say to open a browser, tells you to go to pyronman.rtfd.io. And I can go straight down to set up the Pyronman, but if you want more information, it's all in here. And we want to go to config.txt and we're adding something in. So let's copy this, hit Control alt t to open a terminal and paste it in. And then you're copying this text at the bottom of config.txt. So if I scroll all the way to the bottom and just paste that in, Control x yes to save and enter. Then if we scroll down a bit more, this is how you install the Pyronman software. So just copy all of that and paste it in. And as soon as that finishes, the lights come on, as does the display. So the fan just came on because it's set very low to 50 degrees. What I'm going to do is clip my tie mic onto this screwdriver and uh, I'll run Chromium and let you hear how loud it is. Okay, so it's just come on. So I put the mic back on me now uh, and the fan has stopped anyway. It's not as quiet as the low profile ice tower cooler one that I use on a regular basis, but it is still pretty quiet. And oh, I don't know if you heard it just come on very momentarily. So at 50 degrees, it comes on rarely. Obviously, if you set it to 70 degrees or 60 degrees, it's going to almost never come on. So yeah, I'm happy with that. Now let's try a speed test and see how fast this M.2 drive is. Uh, actually, rather than close that down, let's have a look at my channel for speed tests. So on my channel, let's do a speed test search. Hands come on again. Uh, so I've got some quite fast SSD drive. Yeah, this gives me some quite fast SSDs. Uh, and so we can get some results from that to be able to compare it to. Uh, and this would be what I use on a regular basis. So these two, actually I usually use 32-bit Raspberry Pi, um, but I have installed the 64-bit on this. Right, let's get, uh, what do we have on here? I'm so used to using 
KDE Plasma as my build. So let's open the text editor and paste that in. And let's also, uh, if we go back, this is a handy tip if you're searching my channel. So on a, on a desktop browser, um, just put in what you're searching for. So if we put in M.2, uh, then we'll get, yeah, this one. And also we're gonna get this one as well. So there'll be results in both of these videos. And the fans come on again because I'm playing two videos at once. And here's the M.2 results. So let's copy those. So this is a 52 pi one. I'm gonna put blue so I know which one it is. And the Argon adapter will be this one. So let's close that down and have a look in the description of this. I have got loads of speed tests on SD cards, USB sticks, all sorts of things on my channel. So here's the Argon one. Right, let's save that. Close everything down, which is what I always do. Let's press the Windows key and type in diagnostics and hit enter and run tests. I'll leave this in real time because it does it so quick. And my cat makes a noise and a lot of noises. So show log. So we can copy that into the document, reset and run the tests again. And a third time and let's copy that in. Let's work out which one is the best one. So 292, random write speed, 18, 14. Oh, it's tricky, isn't it? Random read, random write. I kind of think a lot of it is random read speed. So I'm gonna go with the last one. So let's delete that. And let's just compare it. So look at that, the Argon one had exactly the same sequential write speed. Uh, the random write speed was faster, but the rand and the random read speed was slightly faster. Uh, so the Argon one did come out better in this test. Uh, the M.2 drive in the 52 Pi came out slower on the sequential write speed. The random write speed was faster than the Pyron Man. Uh, the random read speed was slower. So it's kind of in between those two. The M.2. Uh, Argon 1 case seems to be the best uh, so far that I've had but obviously it depends what sort of case you want what sort of features and everything you want as well now I'll save that and I'll include that in the description of this video and I'll put a link in the description to the Sunfounder site which has got all the information and everything on it so M.2 SSD supports trim and UASP it doesn't support NVMe drives Although I kind of think NVMe, it's, it's kind of not worth it so much on a Pi 4 because you're still going through a USB 3. Talks about the safe shutdown. The infrared receiver I haven't covered, but uh, it has got it on the front. Doesn't come with a remote, but uh, it's nice to have that compatibility there. I really like the micro SD slot. Uh, the way that it ejects is, uh, is really easy to do. And they talk about being ideal as a NAS drive. Uh, and also for Home Assistant and also Octoprint as well. Actually, let's go back to these speed tests because uh, where you get better random write speeds on the M.2 drive is, is their strength, really. So the sequential write speed is actually faster on these two SSD drives. But the random write speed, you can see here, the fastest one, the Kingston, 12,226. It is quite a lot faster on the Pyron Man uh, and also the random read speed as well. So, yeah. M.2, definitely a good storage type for a Raspberry Pi 4. Now I thought it'd be interesting to try a different color uh, with these LED lights. Uh, so let's go pretty random and go for this yellow color and see how that looks. So if I copy that and uh, go back into the folder, I've already turned on uh, show hidden files. Uh, if you don't have show hidden files, then this folder won't show up. So once that's enabled, you can go in, open up the Pyron Man folder, go to config.txt, and uh, I've already changed this once but didn't try it. My microphone wasn't plugged in, so I'm gonna use this yellow color. I did put like a purpley color in there. So let's save that, close all this down, and restart. And it has changed to a quite a warm yellow color, although it doesn't look warm on my camera for some reason. Uh, it is much warmer than that 
uh, when I look at it with my eyes, that looks almost white in here, but rest assured it is actually pretty yellow. Okay, so thanks to Sunfounder for sending me this case. I'm impressed. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.